What happens if you touch electric eel's deadliest electric fish? The electric eel is a species of fish and not an eel at all. Their long, slender bodies make them look like eels, but their capacity to deliver a high-voltage jolt of electricity is something that can only be found in them. South America is home to three distinct electric eel species, each of which lives in a different part of the continent. They are all apex predators, thus they have little to fear in the environments in which they live. Learn about some of the most amazing aspects of electric eels, such as their ability to launch themselves out of the water to attack their victim and the incredibly complex sensory system they possess. There is no such thing as an electric eel. Even though its conventional name is deceptive, the electric eel is a type of knifefish native to South America and is closely related to catfish. Because it is so exceptional, it has been given its very own genus, which is called Electrophorus. Researchers in 2019 utilizing DNA analysis determined that there are three unique species of electric eel. Electrophorus voltae, Electrophorus veri, and Electrophorus electricus. For centuries, experts believed that there was just one type of electric eel, but in 2019, researchers discovered that there are three distinct species. Each species calls a unique part of the world its home. The electric species live in the Guiana Shield, the voltage species lives in the Brazilian Shield, and the various species live in the lowland Amazon Basin. They are all very similar in appearance, with the exception that the Volte has a head that is formed more like an egg than the other two. Although they are not actual eels, they resemble true eels in appearance, being elongated, cylindrical, and having a snake-like look. Electric eels are a type of fish that are found in freshwater and spend the majority of their time at the bottom of muddy rivers and streams in contrast to eels. They have a surprise in store for you. There's a solid reason why electric eels are called by that name. Different species of electric eels can deliver an electric shock of up to 860 volts. The main organ, the hunter's organ, and the sox organ are the three organs responsible for the production of this defense mechanism, which can be found in all three species of electric eel. The combination of the main organ and hunter's organ producing high-voltage electrical discharges is what causes the most powerful electrical discharges, while sox organ only creates lower-voltage electrical charges. Scientists have found that the species Electrophorus voltae produces the highest possible high voltage charges, which can reach up to 860 volts. In comparison, the Electrophorus electricus and Electrophorus veri species produce high voltage charges that can reach up to 480 volts and 572 volts, respectively. If you were to encounter a shock from an electric eel, would it kill you? Although there are a few documented instances of people dying from an electric eel shock, it could happen. A single jolt could incapacitate a person long enough to cause him or her to drown even in shallow water. Multiple shocks could cause a person to stop breathing or go into heart failure. Whether the shock of an electric eel is fatal also may depend on the size of the eel, which by the way isn't an eel at all. They can launch themselves out of the water. Not only are electric eels able to administer a high voltage shock, but it is also common knowledge that they can launch themselves out of the water to assault their prey. The accidental discovery was made by Ken Catania a biologist at Vanderbilt University, while he was working with electric eels in a tank using a net with a metal rod attached to it. He noticed that the eels would launch themselves out of the water and attack the metal rod with electric shocks if it got close enough to them. Eels thought the rod was a big animal since it conducts electricity, therefore they attacked it. When non-conductors were employed instead of conductors, the eels did not assault the object and simply disregarded it. In the same study, the eels flexed their necks to maintain contact with the target, ensuring that whatever predator they were protecting themselves against felt the full force of their rage. Even though the electric eel is a top predator in the wild and has little to fear, this tactic is especially useful during the dry season when the eels may be trapped in small ponds and are more vulnerable. They lay their eggs in nests made of their own saliva. During a dry season, the female electric eel will construct a saliva-based phone nest in which she will lay her eggs. During the wet season, the males are the ones who are in charge of building the nest out of spit and watching after the eggs until they hatch. It is estimated that 1,200 baby eels will emerge from the safe nest throughout their development. It is generally accepted that electric eels are fractional spawners that produce three separate batches of eggs throughout each spawning cycle. They are people who like to talk a lot. Even though they have a few gills on the sides of their head, electric eels obtain the majority of the oxygen they need from the air above the water. Because of the murky, low-oxygen waters in which electric eels reside, they have developed an adaption that allows them to obtain approximately 80% of the oxygen they need by sucking in air via their mouths. Because they are forced air brothers, electric eels are forced to come up for air to continue living. They do something similar to radar using their electric charge. 
Electric eels have developed the ability to use their electric power for another purpose to compensate for their weak eyesight and the muddy environment in which they reside. This ability allows them to locate their meal more quickly. An investigation of the electrical pulses that are released by electric eels uncovered the existence of three unique varieties. Eels use a low-voltage pulse for electrolocation, short pulses at a high voltage for hunting, and pulses with the highest frequency and intensity when they are ready to attack. The eels will follow the electric field like a radar once they have delivered a shock to their prey. This allows them to home in on their immobilized prey without relying on their sense of sight or touch. They constrict their bodies to focus their stun powers. To successfully take down huge or difficult prey, electric eels employ a cunning method. They wrap themselves around it, retaining control of the prey close to their tails, which are like two electric poles. This tactic at the very least doubles the amount of electricity and hence the amount of shock that is delivered to the prey. The eels can immobilize their prey and reposition it in such a way that it may be easily devoured by employing this behavior, which is one of the reasons why it is so effective. The predominant part of them is made up of electric organs. Even while electric eels can have bodies that are up to 2.4 meters long, just 20% of that length is comprised of their critical organs. The electric organs make up 80% of the eel's body, which includes its entire rear. Even their skin is composed of electroreceptor cells that are tuberous and ampullary. They have managed to cram all of their internal organs into the relatively limited space that is located close to their heads. Why don't electric eels kill themselves by committing suicide via electrocution? It has been discovered that electric eels are capable of and do occasionally electrocute themselves as well as other electric eels. Because the shocks they deliver are designed for smaller fish, this usually does not result in death or severe injury. The fact that eels are so huge and have their organs arranged in such a way that the electrical current flows from their tails rather than their heads may be the reason they can withstand the effects of their electric shocks. Are people at risk when exposed to electric eels? People have been known to pass away after being shocked by an electric eel, despite this being an extremely unusual occurrence. Even in relatively shallow water, a single jolt could be enough to cause a person to drown and numerous shocks could lead to respiratory or cardiac collapse. It is in your best interest to steer clear of their region completely. This includes fishing and swimming. So this is the end of our today's video. Do you like it? Kindly give your valuable response in our comment section below and don't forget to subscribe to our YouTube channel for more interesting and informative videos.